So the Carhartt video is kind of blowing up and I did not see that coming. So I thought I would record a little extra intro for this Ariat boot video because both of these are around $150. And so I thought that might give a little context to why I was so upset with these Carhartt boots because one of them is clearly not a work boot and the other one is clearly a work boot. And I actually recorded this video about a month ago, but Ariat wanted to wait a month until their sale that started yesterday. So it ended up working out perfectly because then you get to see kind of what you're supposed to get for $150 for a work boot and you can save a little bit of money. So I added three links to the description. One is to the listing for this boot. The other one is to save 10% by signing up for their email list that you can use on this boot. And then the third link is to the sale they have going on that has all the other products and boots that are on sale right now. So thanks to Ariat for sponsoring this video and check out those links in the description. And now let's get back to last month me talking about these boots, cutting them in half. And then we'll go back to current me at the end of the video to kind of go over what you're supposed to get for a work boot that's under $150 or around $150. So if you've been watching my channel for a fair amount of time, you know I'm a pretty big fan of this work Chelsea style of boot because they're super comfortable. Like if you're standing on concrete all day, it's, it's hard to beat this style of boot and they're super easy to put on. But there's some pretty big negatives associated with this style of boot that you kind of have to take into consideration when buying these. And Ariat has attempted to fix two of those issues. What are those two issues? The first one is because they're basically all foam, you don't have a whole lot of support through the sole like you would with a normal style boot. There's just a lot more torsional flex. But what Ariat has done is they, the shank that they put in this boot kind of forks off into a Y to give you a little bit of extra support. So I'm really interested to see what this shank actually looks like and if it's really wide enough to give you extra support or if it's just kind of a branding or marketing gimmick. The next thing is these boots are terrible at being puncture resistant. Because they're all foam, a nail will just go right through them. And most of the other brands, they use a fiberboard, which is gonna give you some protection. And most of the time, you're not gonna experience too much issue with standing on nails. But Area put a layer of Slim Flex into this. So now let's kind of go over the information on these boots, starting with the brand. So clearly it's an Ariat boot. The style is the Turbo Chelsea waterproof boot. The color I got is the aged bark, but it also comes in black. Um, these retail for $139.95 and they're made in China. So before we actually start ripping these apart, let's go over some of the features of them and kind of the information that we can gather before cutting on half. So, so let's start with the leather. So this is a full grain, kind of a suede textured leather where they've just buffed the top texture to give you just a little bit of that suede feel, but it's still a full grain leather. It's chrome tanned and it's waterproof. The next thing is these are a non-metallic boot. So when it comes to electrical shock or going through the airport, you're not gonna get buzzed for that in either of those situations. They're puncture resistant, like I mentioned earlier, and they also have a few different options for the toes. And the construction is a cemented construction, but I think what these guys do, and this, this is maybe how they do the other boots too, is while the polyurethane or PU midsole is still soft, or maybe they re-soften it, they attach the upper so it's kind of molded to the midsole so you don't get uh, any big lumps or anything in there. And it just adds to, a, makes it a stronger construction. And for the general layers of what we know so far, the outsole is a TPU or thermal polyurethane outsole, which is oil resistant, slip resistant, and non-marking. And, and it's basically just a harder compound. So you have that wear resistant layer on the outside that still adds a little bit of comfort. And then you go to the midsole, which is the PU midsole, which gives you all that comfort and all that squish that's associated with these boots. And then I think from there, you've got the Swinflex puncture resistant insole. Then from there on the inside here, there's a little bit of a lining. And I think this is kind of like a cool max lining, kind of like what we saw in the Rock Rooster where they add a layer to wick away moisture so you don't get a super swampy foot. And then the leather upper, and that's pretty much all there is to it. And then, oh, I forgot the shank. There's that, the shank in there as well. So I think that's what's inside of it. I think that's everything. So now we just need to cut it in half.
Okay, we've got to cut in half. Let's see what's inside. Now that's a shank. That took me so long to get cut out. I think it's crazy looking. So if you look at it, this is the forked side. It kind of helps prevent that torsional flex. But more importantly, this is the side that goes underneath of the heel and adds a little bit of structure to the entire boot. Because with it, if the shank was just going from the start of the heel to here, you wouldn't have nearly as much structure through the heel and the heel could potentially move independently. They kind of show a breakdown of what's inside of this boot, but they definitely undersell it. There is a lot in this boot. You know, I thought that this was just gonna be about the same as the other work Chelsea's. I'm so out of breath. But it's there's a lot more tech in this than I expected. I learned that that puncture resistant layer is just underneath of this insole layer because I doled my knife up on it. So let's quickly go through the layers just to identify what they are, starting with the TPU outsole. Then we go to the polyurethane or PU midsole. Next, there's this little orange patch here of a much softer foam for your heel. And then on top of that is that Swinflex layer. Underneath of that, near the toe, it looks like we actually have so just a little layer of fiberboard. Then above that, we've got a foam layer. And then for the counter is a composite counter. It's reinforced. So now if we look at those two things that they are trying to prevent or trying to fix with the work Chelsea, the first one being the torsional flex and support of the shank, I would say that they nailed it, at least from the outside looking in. It's really hard to put this to the test, but if you were going to design a shank to help prevent that, you would probably design it just like this. The next issue was the puncture resistance. I don't think it's quite as puncture resistant as say like that, like a Kevlar layer or even a steel layer like you see in some old school boots, but it's an extra layer. It helps prevent it. It's not gonna be no, it's not gonna be anywhere near as puncture resistant or proof as some other boots that actually are built for that, but it does add an extra layer. I'm very surprised at how much they've stuffed into this boot for $140. I am pleasantly surprised at this boot. So what are you supposed to get for a work boot around that $150 price point? A full grain leather, a dedicated counter cover, a real dual density outsole that actually is gonna be fairly wear resistant. You know, this isn't gonna be the most wear resistant um, outsole, you know, it's nothing compared to like a Vibram, but it's gonna be significantly better than a really uh, soft foam outsole. And then finally, the insides aren't floppy and gross. You know, like when I was, if you listen closely in the me cutting up the shoe part of the video, you can hear me breathing heavy and you can see the sweat all over my face because this one was so hard to tear apart. That's what you want in a work boot, not a floppy work boot. So hopefully this adds some context to yesterday's video and why I was so disappointed in these boots and what you're supposed to get for $150 in work boot. Because, you know, it's still a budget work boot when at the end of the day, you know, you can buy really nice work boots for $500, but not everyone can afford that. Not everyone wants that. So for $150, this is around what you're supposed to get. So if you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. It makes a huge difference. And now we're back to Mocktober. We had to take a little detour into Chelsea work boot land to get this video out for Ariat. But next we've got, actually next video is going to be me showing you guys how to clean up a pair of these boots because these white soles are notoriously hard to get clean once they're dirty. And I got a few techniques I think you guys will like. And a lot of people ruin the, the look of their upper when they add the wrong conditioner or clean it the wrong way. So I think this video, a cleaning a pair of mock toe boots is going to be Thursday and then Thursday, then on Sunday, thorough good cut in half video. And then onward and upward from there. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.